Guys, welcome to the I Love Seville Show. My name is Jerry Miller. It's good to be with you on a Wednesday. Happy uh, holidays. We inch closer and closer to Christmas. I'm trying to celebrate the holidays. If you look at the screen with a little ugly sweater, J-Dubs will get the front as I stand up. And then I'll show you the back here on the I Love Seville Network. The front, a little censored Santa, feeling a little frisky. A little, the back, not so censored Santa. Look at the screen. Giving you guys the full Monty, front and back. You know we like to have fun here on the I Love Seville show. A lot I'm going to cover as we get to some news today on the Wednesday edition of the show. Of course, Skuma Boutique Dispensary, one of our partners here on the I Love Seville network and the I Love Seville show. Certificates of analyses for everything in the store, Skuma Boutique Dispensary the best dispensary in Charlottesville for all your holiday and Christmas needs. We have subsidizing Charlottesville area transit on the brain. Subsidizations for Charlottesville area transit for the next four years. And as a result, free rides for locals on CAT for the next four years. I want to offer some perspectives, some topics on that. Um, there's another development plan for the south side of Charlottesville, right over the city line in Albemarle County. This is the fifth new development approved to be added to the school's um, district area of, of, of Mountain View. It's an elementary school. I'm going to offer some perspective on that. I, I, I am all for housing and very much um, a yes in my backyard person. Um, but I think it's paramount to consider infrastructure, in particular schools, before adding development to a little locality or area. I'll give you some perspective on how I feel about this in a matter of moments. Torchy's Tacos is now open as well. They're offering incentives to early customers today. Torchies is, is honestly, um, first it's a chain. I, I have heard from many that the tacos are quite good. Some perspective coming from me on that as well. First I'd like to give some thoughts on Charlottesville Area Transit. Look, it's no secret that CAT, Charlottesville Area Transit, the acronym, has struggled over the last two years. Can you think of a more concerning or a more apprehensive thing to do, trepid thing to do, than to get in a tin can with poor ventilation with strangers during a pandemic? And that exactly is public transportation and riding in school buses. There's a reason we have a school bus driver shortage. There's a reason we have public transportation driver shortage. Would you risk your life for meager pay to drive a tin can that's poorly ventilated during a pandemic that we know is airborne? Many people, and not just in this jurisdiction or locality, would not. Charlottesville Area Transit is a revenue loser for the Charlottesville jurisdiction. Any way you slice it, it's not going to carry, from a revenue standpoint, its weight. Now, Charlottesville Area Transit will offer free fares, free rides, for the next four years for locals. In September of this year, CAT submitted an application to the Virginia Department of Rail and Public Transportation asking for money through the Transit Ridership Incentive Program. They did this with the sole focus of continuing zero dollar fares and its business model that goes with it. They got the money. According to a press release from the city that was sent to us, funding from the American Rescue Plan paved the way for public transportation in Charlottesville 
to offer a zero fare model. CAT is going to continue the fixed route zero fare model into 2026, June 30th of 2026 to be, be, be exact. Look, here's the problem I have. I realize how important I realize how important public transportation is from an equity standpoint. The city of Charlottesville and Almaro County, we outline on this show all the time, are going to get more expensive to live, not less. And we need quality, reliable, ubiquitous public transportation throughout central Virginia to combat an affordability index that's escalating. Eventually, we're going to see, and I hate to say this, but this is factual, eventually what you will see in this area is lower income families and individuals be pushed to the outskirts, outskirts and outer counties of Central Virginia. They'll be pushed to the outskirts and outer counties of Central Virginia because the housing stock is going to be so expensive in Charlottesville and Almaro County. So you have the scales of justice. This is the, 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 the plight that will have to be considered. Do I go to the outer counties of central Virginia for more affordable housing and then erode the savings that comes from affordable housing, ownership, affordable housing, rentals, by getting in a vehicle and driving to the epicenter of employment, Charlottesville and Almaro County? One way you can prevent the erosion of wear and tear on a car and gas costs is by riding a bus. Unfortunately, CAT, Charlottesville, Albemarle Transit, this bus system is not driving or transporting its riders into the Albemarle County and into the outer county areas. Charlottesville Almoral Transit is focused on Charlottesville and Almoral. So here we are. We're giving free fares and free rides to Charlottesville and Almoral County residents. When, if we're cutting to the chase, the deepest pocket individuals are in Charlottesville and Almoral County. This is a conundrum. It's like a catch-22. Yes, public transportation should be ubiquitous, reliable, affordable, and consistent. But CAT's footprint is the wealthy area of Central Virginia, Charlottesville and Almaro. And Charlottesville and Almaro is getting more wealthy, not less. So offering free fares and free rides to the rich footprint really makes no sense. What should happen is a public transportation system that is offering free fares to outer county areas, maybe from the Shenandoah Valley to Charlottesville. Charlottesville and Almaro County are the epicenter of employment. Every day that goes by, every week that goes by, every month that goes by, every year that goes by, the city and Almaro County are becoming deeper pocketed with its residents. As a result, folks living on the financial margin or lower income families and individuals and couples are being pushed 15, 20, 30, 45, one hour away from the epicenter of employment. Giving free fares to the city and the county doesn't truly accommodate those living on the financial margin because they don't live in Charlottesville now, Morrow. They're moving to Louisa, to Goochland, to Orange, to Waynesboro, to Stanton, to Fluvanna, to Nelson, Culpeper, in green. If we really wanted to offer 
not a handout, but a hand up, I'm all for hand ups. I'm completely against hand outs. And if we truly wanted to offer a hand up, the public transportation system would not be a Almoral and City of Charlottesville focused model. Rather, the public transportation system should be a model focused upon Louisa, Goochland, Orange, Nelson, Green, Culpeper, Waynesboro, Augusta, because that's, the, that's where the aggregation of financially margined residents are being pushed to. Hand up. We realize you have to, five days a week, six days a week, travel from the outer counties to Charlottesville and Almoral because that's where the jobs are. We are empathetic that housing has gotten so expensive in Charlottesville and Almoral County, and we realize financially margined individuals are being pushed to the outer counties. So let's come up with a public transportation model that can accommodate where the true needs are. You create a free, fair system in the rich area. Does that make public, does that make common sense to you? Why would the free fare system be focused with routes in the rich area? It's just like, it's not seeing the forest through the trees. Are you going to ask? folks that are lower income, families that are lower income, to get in their car and to drive to a bus stop in Almoral, park their car, and then get on that bus stop in Almoral and, 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 and take the tin can to the UVA hospital? They're still getting in their car, and the wear and tear and fuel costs are still being incurred. I I don't I don't I don't get it. I don't see decision makers here seeing the forest through the trees. It's one of the reasons I'm running for Almaro County Board of Supervisors. I am often asked, what political party do you most identify with? I most identify with the party of common sense. The party of common sense and creating a free fair system that has a model focused upon the rich county and city as opposed to a model that's not focused upon the demographics that truly need the free fair system is ass backwards thinking. One of the items or one of the criteria or platform points in my campaign for Board of Supervisors is reliable, approachable, consistent, and ubiquitous transportation. Free fare is approachable, but not having it in the areas of need is not reliable or consistent, or intelligent. Prove me wrong. Do you disagree? Seriously, prove me wrong. All right, Jojo Robinson, welcome to the program. We love when you watch the show, Jojo. We certainly love when you watch the show, JR. Look, next topic I want to bring up with you. This is another one that just irks me. I'm going to stipulate a few things before I get to the topic. 
We need more housing inventory in Central Virginia. If you uptick supply, you eventually, or you hopefully, will start meeting the obscene demand that's in this area for people looking to purchase homes. One of the conundrums we have from an affordability standpoint is there's not enough housing stock to purchase. And when the supply is low and diminished, depleted, the prices are gonna go up and that's what's happening. It's supply and demand. Ken Elzinga, the esteemed economics professor from the University of Virginia taught me this as a first year at UVA. I'm frustrated because I'm a Yimby, I'm a yes in my backyard. I understand how home ownership creates generational wealth. I understand how home ownership creates stability for children of families. I understand how home ownership is a hedge against inflation. I understand how home ownership is a way to start building disposable income and enhanced savings. But when local government does not, either because they're absent-minded, oblivious, lacking empathy, maybe they don't care, when local government continues to push and force and ramrod new housing stock and development into quarters of our region where infrastructure is not in place, I get frustrated. We had Jen and Paul MacArthur. I am seeing them quite a bit lately on the I Love Seville show months ago to discuss how the fifth grade at Mountain View Elementary, which is down Avon Extended, formerly known as Kale Elementary, how the fifth grade at Mountain View was being potentially forced out of elementary hallways and classrooms and into middle school hallways and classrooms. And this did not transpire, thank goodness, but had this have transpired, the fifth graders would have been on school buses longer than ever, away from their parents longer than ever, and would have had the trials that come with being in classrooms and hallways and buses and sports teams and cafeterias with eighth graders and seventh graders and sixth graders, children much older than them, forcing them to grow up faster than parents would like. Thank goodness that didn't happen. But one of the reasons this was being considered by Albemarle County Public School System was because of the overcrowded nature of Mountain View Elementary. Now, the Planning Commission and local government is considering yet another development, the fifth new development in the Mountain View footprint. So Planning Commission in Almaro County is greenlighting a development in an area or a corridor that does not have infrastructure to accommodate said development. Would you or should you not consider the schools and the roads before you green light the housing? at least put them on similar paths of actuality or fruition. Has anyone, have you, 
have you guys gone south side of Charlottesville, 5th Street extended, Avon extended between 4 and 6 p.m. or 4 and 6.30 p.m.? Have you been down south side of Charlottesville, 5th Street extended, Avon extended between 8 a.m. and 9.30 a.m.? Guys, it's a cluster. The traffic across from the food line on 5th Street, across from 5th Street Station, backs up for miles. A fifth housing development project has been approved for Southside Charlottesville, just over the city line in Almaro County. Now parents that live in this area, Fifth Street Extended and Almaro and, and Avon Extended, are left with this conundrum. Are you ready? Here's the conundrum. Do I stay? in my home in Mill Creek, Lake Renovia, Foxcroft, Oak Hill, Redfields, the villas at Southern Ridge, the Woodlands, Mosby Mountain, Mountain Valley Farm, knowing that my children will be in an elementary school that is overcrowded today and a few years from now will be exponentially more crowded with students? Or do I move now and head to a less crowded area for the betterment of our kids and their educational futures. Take it a step further. Where are you going to move to? You can sell your house in 48 hours, maybe a week, but what are you going to buy? What can you afford? How much have prices escalated since you purchased your current home? What will your new monthly nut be and how much more expensive will you experience because of additional cost of housing? Look, if I'm elected for Board of Supervisors at Morrill County, I live in the Scottsville District. It's a vast district. It has three voting blocks. The Gledmore area in eastern Almaro County, the Keswick area. The Mill Creek, Mountain View voting block. And the Scottsville town voting block. You got three very different demographics of voters. The town of Scottsville leans conservative. The town of Scottsville and right outside, right on the outskirts of town limits, the, the ideology is more reddish, more conservative, more fiscally conservative, socially conservative. The Mill Creek voting block, the Kale Elementary Mill Creek voting block identifies with city of Charlottesville ideology. Makes sense, right? It's right over the city line. The Glenmore ideology identifies with infrastructure concerns, density concerns, and leans a smidge on the conservative scale. Those are your three blocks, your three demographics of voters. One item where it seems all three blocks identify with 
is infrastructure concerns. The kale voting block is so, as they should be, concerned with overcrowding of schools. We legitimately, earlier this year, local government in the school system of Almoro was very much considering, bottom of the ninth inning considering, taking a fifth grade and putting in a middle school because teachers were sitting in closets and classrooms because there were so many desks in the classrooms that the teachers could no longer sit at their normal desk. Legitimately, that's happening. I want more housing supply. But that housing supply should not be prioritized in a way where educational and transportational infrastructure is forgotten, disregarded, or backburnered. Because if you do that, you get Fredericksburg, Northern Virginia. And Fredericksburg and Northern Virginia and the sprawl that go with those regions undoubtedly impact quality of life. Ray Cadell, welcome to the program. Scott Aaronworth, my friend in Virginia Beach, hello, and welcome to the program. Ken Moon Art, welcome to the program. Thank you for watching, Ken. If I'm wrong on, this, on these topics, let me know. I am literally trying to use common sense. Approve development and add new housing stock, but please at the same time allocate financial resources to building new schools. Approve new development and add housing stock so we can all get a piece of the American dream, but please, dear Lord, consider roads and safety and traffic. Approve the development. Add new housing stock. Let's accommodate the people that want to buy houses in our area. But please consider water and broadband and quality of life and runner and walker and biking safety. It is not yes to this and forget these things. Because if it's yes to development without the consideration of infrastructure, then guess what? You're damaging the quality of life. And one of the key reasons why we choose to call Charlottesville and Almaro and Central Virginia our homes. Do you disagree with me? Am I wrong? And no, this is not nimbyism, a not in my backyard perspective. No, it's not. You know what it is? Can I explain what it is? It's called common sense. Common sense is not offering free bus rides for four years in the rich area. Common sense is figuring out a way to offer free bus rides for four years in the outer county area where the residents need the transportation. It's time that government and leadership and visionaries 
utilize common sense and practical reasoning. It's time government and leadership and visionaries and conductors utilize a small business mindset when every damn dollar counts. I wanted to keep those topics on your radar. I am empathetic for a family that's being gentrified out of Albemarle and Charlottesville and being pushed and ramrodded to Goochland, Louisa, Augusta, Waynesboro, and beyond. And I understand that family may move 45 minutes, one hour away from the epicenter of employment because housing is more attainable, approachable, and affordable in those areas. But the opportunity cost of housing savings is wear and tear on vehicles, additional expenses associated with gasoline, and even more importantly, the opportunity cost of someone's time being spent in a vehicle driving an hour one way and an hour the other way home instead of circulating resumes, improving professional skill sets, getting higher levels of education or circulating resumes so men and women can climb the professional vertical totem pole. Here's a free bus ride. It just happens to be offered in the city of Charlottesville and Almaro County only, two of the wealthiest jurisdictions in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Hey, we want to help you save by giving free fares for four years. Oh no, those free fares and those free bus rides are not in the area where people need them the most. They're in the jurisdictions where people are driving Teslas, Mercedes, BMWs, Suburbans, and have multiple vehicles at their household disposal. Hey, we're going to green light new housing stock and new development. And we're going to focus on the south side of Charlottesville. And we're going to do this so everyone can have a slice of the uh, American dream pie. Oh no, we're not going to consider the overcrowded nature of elementary schools and the fact that teachers have their desk in the closets of their classrooms because there's additional desk of students in the classrooms. Oh no, we're not going to consider the next generation and the trials in front of them from a learning standpoint. Well, you want to know what's going to happen? The families of means are going to get tired and frustrated and have enough of this overcrowded nature and they're going to yank their kids from public schools and put them in private schools or homeschool them and the generational wealth gap will become wider and greater. Uh. A new Ray Cadell, I did not know that. Thank you, Ray Cadell. Ray Cadell said, and a new Wawa is coming right at the intersection you're talking about now. Is that Fifth Street Extended or Avon Extended, Ray Cadell? I will check that, uh, that Facebook message you sent me about Rio Point Apartment Complex. And he says, this new development, Rio Point Apartment Complex, seems to have a lot of impact at a busy intersection. I will check out that message after the show, RC. Is the Wawa Avon Extended or Fifth Street Extended, RC? If you could let me know, that would be huge, my friend. I love when you guys contribute to the program. One other item I got a, 
I want to get out there. Oh, Ray's offering some perspective here. It's replacing Hardee's across from the food line. Good Lord. Thank you, Ray Cadell. The Hardee's across from the food line on 5th Street Extended. That Hardee's at, I've been in the Charlottesville area for about 21 years. That Hardee's across from Food Lion on 5th Street Extended, at one time that was a quality Hardee's. Food was consistent, staff was consistent, it was clean, it was priced well. At the end, that Hardee's across from Food Lion down 5th Street Extended became a disgusting place to eat and to patronize. Dirty, unreliable staff, food incredibly inconsistent. That Hardee's is closed. Our friend Ray Cadell, a stakeholder in our community, passing on information, it's going to turn into a Wawa. I think we're all in agreement that Wawa is going to have more vehicle traffic than Hardee's, especially the iteration of Hardee's that was the last few years. We're in agreement with that, right? So at that intersection, the intersection on 5th Street that leads to 5th Street Station and the intersection on 5th Street that leads to the Food Line Shopping Center, we are going to add an additional business to log jam the street and the corridor. You guys want to know one of the most unsafe portions of Albemarle County? What are the two roads, Judah? Help me out here. When you're going down 5th Street Extended and you take a right to get on Oak Hill, is that old Lynchburg Road? Like you're going to Redfields and Oak Hill Farm? Uh, oh, yeah, that's Sunset Avenue. Thank you. And the, the right before that is old Lynchburg Road. Like you're going to Oak Hill Barbershop. Formerly Jim Shanks Barbershop, Oak Hill Market. You guys want to know, thank you, Judah Wickow, our director. You want to know two of the most dangerous intersections in Amar County? You try taking, you try being on Sunset Avenue or Old Lynchburg Road, and you want to take a left onto Fifth Street like you're going to Cherry or Tonsler downtown. You take that left from Old Lynchburg and Sunset. You have to cut across two lanes of traffic to get on the other side of the road to head back into town. Every year, every year, there's a few T-bone traffic accidents, many years leading to deaths. The traffic intersection at Old Lynchburg Road and, and Sunset Avenue need traffic lights for additional safety. The collateral damage of those traffic lights is backed up traffic. Now you're adding a Wawa to the mix. Thank you, Ray Cadell. I don't want this area to turn into Northern Virginia. I don't want this area to turn into Fredericksburg. Do you? All right, one other item out of the notebook, J-dubs. Man. Torchy's Tacos, Stonefield, grand opening day today. The first 100 guests received a limited edition Torchy's, Torchy's Charlottesville t-shirt that grants the first 100 guests a free order of half queso plus chips every time they wear the shirt into Torchy's Tacos. You get a free You get a free half queso and chips every time you wear the t-shirt into Torchy's Tacos through December of next year. Here's my here's my issue. Stonefield much like a Barracks Road has rents that are so damn high 
that only national, global, big brand, big chain businesses can afford them. And while I certainly will give torchies a whirl because I'll try anything once, my dollars, my wife's dollars, my family's dollars are committed to local businesses and our community. I'll give you a whirl, torchies. But it's El Mariachi all day, every day for me. It's Guadalajara all day, every day for me. El Puerto all day, every day for me. La Michoacana all day, every day for me. What am I missing, Judah? Mexicano restaurants. Sombreros all day, every day for me. The Wickhowers patronize El Puerto. Tacos Gomez all day, every day for me. You go to Tacos Gomez and it's a mom, two sons, and a, sis and a daughter working the taco truck at the base of Pantops. Kevin Gomez, I love you. Miguel Gomez, I love you. Gomez family, I love you. You have Tacos Gomez? Have you had the tacos from the food truck at the base of Freebridge on Pantops across from Cosner Brothers? Try them. Get them. Eat them. Devour them. Love them. Put them in your belly and come back for more. Damn good tacos. Stonefield and Barracks Road create revenue for the municipalities, Charlottesville and Almaro. Stonefield, Almaro County, Barracks, City of Charlottesville. A necessary evil. That revenue can be leveraged, utilized, and allocated for local pursuits, endeavors, and opportunistic paths. I get it. I understand the value proposition of the 29 corridor and the big brands that are there. We patronize downtown, though. We patronize midtown. We patronize the high street corridor. We patronize the UVA corner. We patronize X because it's local. One other item out of the notebook. Across from the Boar's Head and Birdwood Golf Course, next to Bel Air Market, and I'll put this on the uh, I Love Seville Network. Across from Birdwood Golf Course and Boar's Head Resort, next to Bel Air Market, and some of the best sandwiches you can get in Charlottesville are at the market, the Tiger Fuel Markets. I love the Keswick. It is damn good. It's under 10 bucks. Every time I eat it, I'm satisfied. The Sutton Brothers own that business. I have a market sandwich card. Judah, you need to get a market sandwich card. You register either eight or nine sandwiches and the next one is free. Everyone, as Taylor Sutton has said on this network, loves some delicious French bread sandwiches. But here's the bit of news that I'll put on the network. Across from Boar's Head Resort, across from Birdwood Golf Course, next to Bel Air Market, Hunter Craig is developing a small retail strip. Kenny Ball Antiques, I'm hearing, is going to be one of the tenants there. Have you noticed? Do you watch and see the enhanced housing density, the overcrowded of schools, the traffic congestion, the strangulation of infrastructure? It doesn't happen that much on the western side of Albemarle, on the western side, right over the city line. Have you noticed? It doesn't happen so much on the eastern side 
of Albemarle, the Keswick side. You know where it happens? The southern side and the northern side. I love you guys. I love connecting with you through this platform. It's the I Love Seville show where we have very real conversations. I'm always going to be frank. I think you rely on me to be frank. I appreciate you joining us on a Wednesday. Wear an ugly sweater. Put on a Christmas hat. Scott Bandy watching the program on our group. Fifth Street Hardy's has vacated that building, seen it, it's like a haunted house. Is it that bad, Scott? I went to Hardy's um, down Fifth Street Extended about eight months ago for bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. I got that biscuit, and it was a, a terrifying proposition. The egg was undercooked, the biscuit was raw, and there was hair under the biscuit. I threw it away. I literally threw it away. They used to have like, buy two biscuits, get one free. And the consistency and the quality just deteriorated quickly. Scott, we love when you watch the program. Live on all social media, I'll put the uh, piece of news out there about the small retail strip across from Birdwood Golf Course and next to Bel Air Market that's being developed by Hunter Craig on our um, I Love Seville network. I appreciate, appreciate you guys joining us on the uh, I Love Seville show. For Judah Wickhauer, my name is Jerry Miller. You guys have a good afternoon. Take care. Keep that on camera. How about the back? It's good. The back? I got another one for tomorrow. Do you have any you can wear? No.